Hi guys, I'm Lauren. Welcome to my channel. It's so good to see you. Thank you for popping in. I am just loving doing these daily vlogs with you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my baby is vacuuming downstairs. I don't know if you can hear it or not. I'm so sorry if you can. Ah. Oh my goodness. If you watched yesterday's video, then you saw the greenhouse updates and everything. Just continuing on. I did some of that last night and now I'm taking care of it this morning and we're just finishing everything up. And that's just kind of what we're doing. We're just going to be doing planty chores today. Yeah, and just the things that we talked about before. So with that being said, let's get into it. All right, so plant chore time. These are going in my terrarium. I'm just going to suck it up buttercup and I'm just going to put them in there. I kept planning on doing another terrarium. I don't think I'm going to have time before I need the space in this greenhouse. So we're sucking it up buttercup and we are taking care of this and just shoving it in there. That's the plan. Okay, so this is one very sad peperomia with a lot of mold and mildew from other dead propagations that were in here. And yes, I could clean it and yes, I could save it. But I have an entire huge pot and I have no intention of mailing this out to somebody. So in this particular case, I am going to just throw this away. I don't want to introduce whatever bacteria, mold, mildew and whatnot into a terrarium environment. Um, and honestly, it does not look like a very healthy plant because it's been in the dark for so long. So I'm just going to trash this. And honestly, I'm not going to feel guilty about it. And if you have plants at home that you need to trash too, don't be afraid to, don't be ashamed of it. Just go ahead and get it taken care of because honestly, it's better just to throw it away than to leave it sitting there, taking up space, and you're not taking care of it. It's gonna end up dying anyway, and it's gonna put a strain on your mental health for something that you're gonna throw away anyway. That's basically what I've done here. So, I mean, if it was like one of these, <laughs> no, this is somebody's wish list plant. I'm not going to be trashing this. That's not very fair. Um, maybe if it had thrips or spider mites or something that I didn't want to pass on to somebody else, then yeah, I would throw it away. But a perfectly healthy plant, I, I'm not going to throw it away. Even if it like magically reverted itself, I wouldn't throw it away. But like something that's unhealthy, that's pretty much useless to somebody, absolutely. Like, absolutely. Okay. And of rants. Okay, so this has to move back upstairs or back up to the next level. And then I'm gonna scoot all these Fetonia. Actually, I will probably try to fit all the Fetonia. I'm gonna clean out the other terrarium over there. I don't know if you guys have seen it. That has, um, excuse me, my jewel orchid and stuff in it. So I think, yeah. I think these are gonna go in there. I'm gonna shuffle some things around and make that happen. All right. And then this guy needs to be potted up. Needs to be repotted. This is just terrible. And it's not even rooting. It's all soft. Ew. I don't know why it's doing this. Not a clue. Not a clue. I bought it as a cutting and I think it was cut a lot of times. I don't know. This just looks terrible. <laughs> poor plant. Poor, poor plant. I'm so sorry. How the mighty have fallen. These leaves are really cute little heart shaped leaves though. They're adorable. They're not the big chunky thick succulent things they're supposed to be. See, that's what happens when you don't give a plant enough light, guys. It, it does this. This. Yep. Alright, so this needs to be repotted. And then I can probably put it on my bookshelf with my other peperomia if I make sure it doesn't have any pests or anything. So, there's that. Alright, this thing is so dry. It's got so many growth points on it. It wants to grow. The vibrancy of this plant. Oh my God, you see this? You see this? All of these, all of these growth points. This one didn't make it. So this is bone dry peat, yuck. I, I, I don't wanna use the word hate because the peat serves a purpose. It absolutely does. It's great for rooting plants, great for moisture retention, but this is straight up 
repeat. They didn't even mix any perlite or anything in here. These things are gonna be so hard, rock hard in here. I'm gonna have to soak them to be able to pull them out to repot them with something else. So honestly, that's why I've, I've been putting it off. But I've put it off way too long and I'm gonna pull them out, put them in a smaller pot or maybe some water depending on what their roots look like. And then I'll have this beautiful pot to put something else in. And really, this is a really nice pot. It's a really nice ceramic pot um, for a cash pill. So, I have not watered this thing in months and there's still moisture on the bottom. Oh, just peat. <laughs> Don't leave your plants in the peat, guys. Just do it. It's just terrible. Okay. All right, so I got the water so I can water these plants. Yes, they're in apple juice containers. I have my faucet downstairs and I have to lug these up the stairs. So I refill them with tap water. I let them sit out at room temperature and then I will water my plants with them. And I just reuse our apple juice containers. Um, I don't know, they're about the right size. <laughs> what is that? Oh my gosh, I think my son put some styrofoam from my plant packaging stuff in there. Oh my gosh. He's so silly. Ugh, what a mischief maker. All right, anyway, so I'm just gonna take the water and I pour it in my watering can and then I water all my plants. So that's that. I do use well water, I don't have city tap water. So if you have city tap water, they do add chemicals to the city tap water. Also, if you have a well and you use a salt filter, then that can sometimes put too much salt in the water and make your plants cranky. So just test it on a plant or a couple of plants that you don't really care about. And then you can go ahead and start using it on the plants that you do care about once you realize that it's worked. Usually it takes about two or three days for a plant to get really cranky and absorb. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. Oh, this is a baby philodendron micans, by the way. If I didn't talk about that before. And did you just chop water these guys? Because they're sitting in a tray and it's not the best tray, but it's a tray from the dollar store and it doesn't really matter. It was already ruined anyway. So we're just making use of it. Here we go. I just can't get enough of this plant. I really can't. I know I've oozed and goobed all over it. And this Marble Queen does not get the attention she deserves. Like, I think it was for maybe a week that she was all over Facebook groups and everybody wanted her, and then after that, I never see her anymore. She is a highly underrated plant. So if I made that video, that plant would go there. <laughs> Wow, it clearly likes being in here. Oh my gosh. Alrighty. All right, so this Pepperomia Russo is gonna go in with another Pepperomia in a little cookie jar that I have um, up on the shelf. So he can go get tucked in there, or maybe I'll put him in another jar that I have. Got so many new little growth points that he's clearly doing really well. You can see these huge leaves comparatively. It's doing great. 
right, so he's gotta go. And then, hi Leah, hi Leah. I can't believe those roots. I need to add more sphagnum in here. This pilea is not looking so hot, but it's got new growth coming in there, so that is good. Pretty happy with that. All right, so let's try to clean some of the dead stuff out of here. I have not touched this in months. So, other than to like come in and look at it, it's pretty bad, huh? There we go. Alright, so I am going to add more sphagnum moss to this. I do have a bunch. And then this jewel orchid is coming out until it's got the death plug on it. I am going to do that in a separate video though. I am going to unpop this beauty. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It's just growing so wonky. So wonky and beautiful. All right. Yep, yeah, just something to keep in mind. Um, I am going to propagate this later, so keep an eye out for that video if it's not out before this one. So, I've just got too many things going on at once. All right, so this is going to stay, this is going to stay. I'm going to leave all these dang pilea in here because they will die if I take them out and I'm not gonna repot them or anything oh it's got new baby ones in there too can you see that oh it's got new baby growth that's so cool good job good job little pilea all right so these are all little pilea buddies they're all doing really well I'm gonna get more sphagnum moss and put it in here and then we'll go from there so I also realized that my skindapsis I have hanging is actually really, really thirsty. So I'm gonna make sure to water that as well. So I got my little bucket down there and then I'm just gonna put water in it and let it soak while I'm doing all these chores. And I wanted to show you, you can tell that it's thirsty because it, its leaves are starting to curl up. So when they start to curl up like this and the soil is dry, then you know that it's not root rot and you know that it actually just needs some water. get some more water but I have it in a, a bucket and it's gonna soak it up soak it up for a while and bottom water that it'll be all good I've talked about it before but this is the sphagnum moss that I like to use so you can see it just soaks in moisture it's responsibly harvested uh, which makes it way better than peat moss but it's also long-lasting you can clean it afterwards you can boil it or whatever um, so I'm just going to take some of this and I'm just going to put it in our terrarium. Alright, so I just put down a nice layer of the sphagnum moss. Um, I just used the long fiber, I didn't chop it up, um, just because it's for the bottom. So, and then I have all the pilea here. I'm looking at it from the front and you want to have the taller plants in the back and the smaller plants in the front. That way you make sure that the smaller plants are getting the light that they need. I also just put the sphagnum moss in here dry and I'm going to go back and water that in just a little bit but I want to make sure I get all the plants in first and then we'll go from there. And I'm making sure that the big leaves are in the back and the smaller leaves are in the front. Try to tuck as much as I can in here because I know I'm going to be losing a lot of this humidity space in the greenhouse. Okay, so I managed to get it all filled up. I've got the asparagus fern over here. I've got all the Fetonia in here, <laughs> all four of them. I've got the Pilea over here. Here's the Peperomia Parallel, another Pilea, the Fire Flash Seedlings. Um, I put the Ming Aurelia ferns in here, or I'm sorry, Ming Aurelia trees. I'm hoping they'll get enough light, we'll see. Uh, I put that propagation of the Pilea Peppermoides, another Fire Flash. I did stick the Hoya Sunrise in here as well because it's doing absolutely nothing where it's at. So maybe it wants some higher humidity. We shall see. 
I've got the Syngonium uh, Neon over here, and then the Asparagus one, if I didn't already say that. And I'm pretty much out of room with this for now. So, but it cleaned out a lot of space in my greenhouse. So, that's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, I think I'm gonna get another terrarium and start putting all these peperomia in it. So, I'll get that and be right back. All right, so this is the little cookie jar that I'm using as a peperomia terrarium. It was a home to my uh, peperomia elongata right here. But clearly there's a little bit more room for other peperomia. You can see this little guy's trying to escape already. Oh my goodness, he's so cute. But I managed to fit the peperomia russo. There's a little caparata there. And then there's that new peperomia in there as well. Here is that Peperomia Hope. Um, I was gonna uh, repot it, but I've had it for over a year now. I really think it just needs to be cut and I need to start over. So I'm gonna cut off the etiolated parts and then we will go from there and I'll just chop them up and make sure that there's, um, you know, a few leaves for each one and we're just gonna propagate it in some sphagnum moss. Right, so I've chopped it all up and then I've just got to chop it down even more. I could technically just stick it like this right in the sphagnum moss, but I don't need to do that. Um, it wouldn't fit in my container anyway. And I've tried to water propagate this plant and it did not go so well for me personally. So I am going to just prop it in the sphagnum moss since that seems to be a no-fail method for peperomia. And I already have some peperomia propagations in here, so we're just gonna go ahead and plop these in here too. This is actually a sneak peek for another video because I have a bunch of my water propagations I popped up in here. <laughs> this is just taking up more space in that same propagation box. All right, so I did put water in this and I did kind of dump it to test it and make sure it will come out. So we're just gonna repot these guys really quick. And that's the plan. Uh, very dense, not a lot of roots. No wonder this plant wasn't able to do anything. Ugh, drives me nuts. Dang death plugs. If they would just remove them before they potted them up, the plant could have succeeded. Like it could have rooted even more and then it would have gotten big enough that I would have just repotted it and it would have been fine instead of playing this like struggle game and then you have to try to guess what's going on with the plant. Ugh, well, now we know what was going on with the plant. All right, so I have a little pot here and I have some sphagnum moss and I'm just gonna pot them all up in sphagnum moss. I'm not gonna rinse off their roots. I've already irritated their roots enough and messed them up enough tearing them out of that thing. So I'm just gonna scoot them all in here and then this way I can keep an eye on all of them and if one starts to die, I can chop and prop and try to prop it in water and you know, we'll We'll just play it by ear with this because I'm not sure exactly how this plant is supposed to go. So I'm just going to make sure that they are all given space in between each other and just try to be as gentle as possible. Putting the sphagnum around and just give them some space to recoup and recover. I am going to put these back in the greenhouse too so that way they can recover in there.
All right, now let's put it in the greenhouse. All right, so we got most everything done. I did not chop up this philodendron yet. I did pot up this brantianum, but I lost the footage for it. So it's just in sphagnum moss though. And I still gotta put stuff on poles. This new leaf is unfurling very nicely though. I got all this down here cleaned out and then all it, all of it is empty down here for the most part. So that's pretty cool. And I kind of condensed everything on the bottom shelf down here. I do have to pot up the jewel orchid, but other than that, it is all done. The fern will be happy down here too. All right, that's not everything, but that's everything for today, basically. So I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it.